Hi guys, uh, welcome to another Base of Your Face lesson. And today I'd just like to look at uh, playing the blues, basically. Uh, let's take an F blues progression. Okay, now, if you are at a relatively early phase of, on the double bass, you've probably learned to play the blues in a somewhat kind of arpeggiated way, something like this maybe. Just going down, just going down the scale almost diatonically with very little chromaticism. Okay, let's talk about chromaticism instead. So you notice I played all of that in the first position on the double bass, um, and what I would like you to try and do now is use more chromaticism. Um, I'm going to give you an example bass line. passing notes in there. For starters, going between the 1 and the 4, I'm going F with the first finger, G. Make sure you've got your good claw position there. Remember your claw position, that's very important. Voice the G. Slide up a semitone to the G sharp. And then play the open A. And then you're on to the B flat, B flat, right, with your first finger. And if you've got your claw position sorted, then you're going to have the fifth and the octave and the ninth all within your reach very easily. Um, so something I would suggest is, okay, so actually what I'm doing there is I'm going to the seventh with my first, with my second finger, and then I'm playing the up, open D, and then I'm voicing the F again. So we've gone. And then we're going to go down. So we're going down scale fragments there from the F, F, E flat, D, C, E flat, D, C, B, natural. Then back onto the back onto the B flat, and I mean you could do anything. Uh, remember on the seventh chord, it's very nice to play the even the flat third. sharp, D, and then perhaps you could go up to the go up to the F and then to the seventh A flat G and then go to G flat down to the F again and here's where it gets interesting you're gonna play you're going to play F minor actually on a, on a dominant seventh chord, which will give you what we call a seven sharp nine, which is a lovely sound. So we're going to go F, G, A flat, or G sharp, and then go to, go to the, the B flat. Look at the chord position there. And then here we've got the, the turnaround where we've got. Um, the three, six um, chords in F. So 
we've got A minor, okay, and then it's going to go to a D7, but instead we're going to substitute the D7 for an A flat, maybe we could use an A flat augmented or even a half diminished chord. And now we're on to the now we're on to the two five part. Okay? Where we've got G. And here I suggest we go. So we're gonna we're gonna shift up into the the next half position. So we're playing G. Natural, and then we're going to go up to the f uh, five C, and then down the scale C B flat A G, and then we're back to back to the root chord, and then go down the scale like this F E flat D. Anyway, what I've showed you will give you more idea of how you can use chromaticism. Basically, one of the basic rules with with jazz there is that you could use on dominant seventh chords. It's fine to use the flat third. Uh, you don't always have to use the major third. What sounds really good is going is going from the flat third. So in F, A flat to A natural, go up to the go up to the major third. Um, and that sounds really good. Another thing that sounds good with dominant seven chords is, you know, the chicken. That's another pattern that sounds great. Root, third, fourth, raised fourth, uh, fifth, and seventh. You can apply that to a blues as well. Etc. So that works as well. Chromaticism generally works between the flat third and the natural third, uh, sorry, the major third, and the fourth. Uh, raised fourth and fifth, that works very well. And also, when you're going to resolve onto a note, sometimes, check this out, surrounding the root. In other words, G flat, E natural, and then F. Um, it just gives the bass line more uh, harmonic motion. One good exercise to do as well when you get a little bit more confident with this is to look at how can you make the bass line go just rise. Check this out.